The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment of silence to center ourselves on God. All those able, please rise for our call to worship as printed in your orders for service. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, God was. here and now among us, beside us, enlisting the people of earth for the purposes of heaven. God is. In the future, when we have turned to dust and all we know has found its fulfillment, God not denying the world but delighting in it, not understanding the world, but redeeming it through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. God was, God is, God will be. Let us pray. Almighty and ever loving God, may you give us such a vision of your purpose and such an assurance of your love and power that we may ever hold fast the hope which is in Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite all the younger members of the church to come forward, please. We had a ton this morning at 8.30. Let's see if we have a couple today at 11. Great. Good to see y'all. Good morning. It's always such a blessing to see our beautiful and precious kiddos in worship. I know I have a couple of my own. Okay. There you are. I can guarantee you at least two are in the sanctuary. So what I want to do this morning, and it involves you adults and teenagers as well, is we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game called the quiet game, okay? 
I had a dad just say, I love that game. <laughs> all right, so let's all be as quiet as we can be. Good job. I didn't know Presbyterians could be so quiet. Way to go. Well, the point of playing that game this morning is that the scripture we're going to hear in a moment talks about hearing God's voice. And it's easier usually to hear if we're quiet, if we take some time to be in silence so that we can hear and listen. And that includes listening to God. So today, as we go home, all of us today, let's think about how we can find some quiet moments to not quite be as busy as we usually are, as noisy as we usually are, so that we can hear from God. All right, let's pray, and then you can get a worship bag to take back to your seat. Let's pray. Loving God, we trust that you are a God who speaks to your people. Help us to slow down, to listen to you and your voice. We love you, Lord, and all of God's children say, amen. Thank you, Ann Reed. Well, good morning. It is great to see all of you here worshiping with us in person and those online. We are glad that you're joining with us wherever you happen to be today. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We hope and pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. I'd ask at this time that y'all please sign the pew register. It's the little red book in the pew. And if need be, take a second to pass that down the pew. Those of y'all who are at home or wherever you might be, maybe send a text letting us know that you're here or an email. That would be really terrific. I'd like to call your attention to the announcements, all of which may be found on the back pew pages of your bulletin. And I have a few in particular that I would like to um, lift up. First, those of you who usually attend 11 a.m., you may not know Emma Livingston. She's been our intern in um, children's ministry for several years now. Well, today is her last day. She did come to 8.30, but if you happen to know Emma, um, maybe send her a card or some other form of um, appreciation. I know that she would like that. Our Christian sympathies go out today to the family and friends of Kirk Dougal. Kirk died this past week, and there will be a memorial service for him in his native state of New Hampshire. Also this morning, I would like to give a big, huge thank you to my dear colleague, Ann Reed Bros, and all of those who helped out with Vacation Bible School. I'm grateful for you. We could not have done it without you, and it was a roaring and very faithful success. So thank you, Ann Reed. Thank you to all the volunteers who helped make this year so wonderful. And finally, I wish all of you a very happy Father's Day. Those of you who um, have children here or those of you who have always acted like um, fathers to children, wherever that may be, I am grateful to you and thank you. Well, beloved, let us now turn our hearts as well as our heads to the reading and proclamation of God's word. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, May you quiet our minds and hearts that we might focus all of who we are upon you. And may the reading and proclamation of your word open our hearts and minds to your will. For the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 4, as well as 9b through 14. And this is the text from which today's sermon is drawn. Listen now to God's holy word. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, 
and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 8, verses 26 through 36. Listen now to God's holy word. Then they arrived at the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on shore, a man from the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had not worn any clothes, and he did not live in a house, but lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, shouting, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wild. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd stampeded down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord.
There's an old saying, when you talk to God, we call it prayer. But when God talks to you, we call it delusion. Well, according to the Bible, this old saying is wrong. Hearing a voice when alone or seeing something no one else can see is rare. But it is not a litmus test for insanity. In fact, from what I've read, at least one in ten people say they've heard a voice or seen something no one else can see. And, after all, this really shouldn't surprise us. We can never, ever pin God down. God is who God is. God will be who God will be. And God can and will speak however God wants to speak. You know, God's presence is, well, varied and multifaceted and diverse. God speaks in many ways. God speaks in many languages and in many tongues. Perhaps God has even spoken to you. In today's reading from 1 Kings, God speaks to the prophet Elijah in the sound of silence. In a world that's full of noise and drama, I think we put too little value on silence. And us Americans, well, well, we have come to value big and dramatic shows of power and grand displays of strength. We love our glitz. In part, this is because we've come to believe that vigor is always better and excitement is worth more than stillness. We have been fooled. And Elijah, well, Elijah probably wasn't any different than we are today. As you heard the lesson from 1 Kings, I hope you heard that Elijah probably expected to hear the Lord in the gush of that strong wind, the drama of that earthquake, or that dazzling fire. But the Lord was in none of these. I've been in ministry now for 21 years, and I've talked to so many people over these 21 years that I think it's safe to assume that more often than not, we assume that God's presence will come at us and, and shake us up and set our lives on fire, overwhelm us. But what if God doesn't always act that way? What if just maybe God comes to us in the sound of silence and in the act of being still. And what if we are so busy looking for God out there in the showy stuff of life that we miss the whispers of the Holy Spirit? And what if we are so busy listening to news and to, and to music and to television and to the voices of this world that that, that we can't even hear the voice of God. It goes without saying that never in history have human beings been so bombarded constantly by the noise of the world. 
the noise of our creation. I mean, it is so hard to escape the never-ending sounds of, of cars, social media, TV, washing machines, dishwashers, the beeping of microwave ovens, music, phone calls, the news, conversations. A moment of silence is no longer golden. It is priceless. So in this morning's lesson from 1 Kings, I think it's my judgment that the story of Elijah has a whole lot to teach us. He retreated to a solitary place, alone, a quiet place away from the noise of the surroundings. And you know as well as I do that we live in a world that has wrapped us like a little present in noise, in sound. And so I wonder if we are always attuned to the sounds of this world, the sounds that make up our lives. Tell me, how do we ever expect to hear the sounds of God? Yes, I know, of course, of course, God can do whatever God wants to do. God can speak right through that noise. God can speak through the sounds of this world. But that's not really the question for me this morning. The question is really this. Do you spend any quiet time listening for God. Myself, when I'm surfing, when I'm doing yoga first thing in the morning, or, or gardening, or reading scripture, that is when I feel most open to God watching birds, which is a favorite thing of mine to do, looking at waves, I listen. In the calm of a long beach walk, as the ocean ebbs and flows, I listen for God's whisper of a voice. And now, you know, at the ripe old age of 52, the older I grow, the more I hear God's voice in silence. When do you listen for God's voice? While God can speak any way God wants to speak, most of the time, God speaks through other people, or, as in the case of Elijah, in the stillness of a moment. It was 1956, and Martin Luther King Jr. was sitting in the quiet of his kitchen. He was terrified by the fear of what might happen to him and his family during the Montgomery bus boycott. And as he sat there, scared in his kitchen, all by himself, he said that he heard the quiet voice of Jesus. The quiet voice of Jesus. Promising, I will be with you. And King later said that it's because of this voice, the quiet voice of God, that he was encouraged to go forward despite his fear. 
And I can't help but wonder, what if he had been sitting in his kitchen and the TV was on and he's got his ear pods in and, and microwave is beeping and, you know, make up other noise you want to. What, would he have heard that voice that morning? May you find time to listen for God's voice. May you find time to get still before God. Turn off Netflix. Turn off your phone, the computer, the music. Crawl inside yourself, as scary as that may be. Find a calm place. Practice being silent. And may you hear the encouraging and challenging voice of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On behalf of the session, I present, joining by reaffirmation of faith, Ingrid Albert, Ellen Blandford, Sandra Waisley, Simon Dance, Carolyn Moldavani, Becky Moyer, Mary Sapp, Paul Sapp, Kimberly Solano, Barry Spragan, Melissa Spragan. Joining by letter of transfer, Lynn Roberts, and joining by profession of faith, Sam Cox, Sam Cox, and Robert Moldavani. Through baptism, we enter the covenant that God has established. In that covenant, God gives us new life, and we are guarded from sin and evil and nurtured by the love of God. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. I ask all of you, therefore, in coming to membership at Memorial Presbyterian Church, your new church home, that you reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the ancient church, the faith in which we were baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you, with God's help, be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? I invite you all now to stand as you are able and join me as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which are printed in your bulletin. As one body we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. My sisters and brothers, you have professed your faith, and so I ask you, Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, will you? We welcome all of you into the worship and the work of this congregation. God has drawn us together by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we trust that God will continue to draw us closer in mutual love and in shared service. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with you. Please take this time to share that peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. I'm so glad that you're here. Melissa, peace be with you. Ingrid, peace be with you. I'm glad you're here. Sandra, peace be with you. I'm glad that you're here. Simon, and also with you, my brother. Glad you're here. Becky, peace be with you. I'm glad that you're here. Peace be with you. I'm so glad that you're here. My husband came with me today. I saw that, Lynn. That's great. Peace, my brother. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Take your time with the prayers. Let us now turn our thoughts and our hearts to God with our prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of love, in the beginning you created humanity in your very own image, and you called your creation good. Remind us that each and every person in this world is one whom is created by you. Help us to see one another as you do, and to treat one another with the dignity and the respect that your creation deserves. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to be intentional, to turn off the noise in our lives, to sit in silence, trusting that you are a God who wants to speak to us, that you do speak to us. Help us to have listening ears. God, we pray this day for the well-being of your people around the world. We pray for provision of food, shelter, medical care, safety, for all of those who live in areas of conflict and need. Especially this day, we remember the people in Ukraine. God, we ask that you would be with those in our own community here in St. Augustine who suffer on the margins we pray that you would use us to be the hands and feet of Jesus to them, even when it's difficult or it makes us uncomfortable. God of healing, our hearts are with those among us this morning and with those whom we love, who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that you would provide healing that you would provide respite and strength to all who are in need of your, of your care. We trust that you are a God who sees our pain and that you provide new mercies every day. We pray today especially that you would be with the family of Kirk Dougal. Give them comfort and peace. On this Father's Day, we give you thanks for our fathers, 
as well as for the special people in our lives whom you have used to serve in that role. We ask that you would comfort those who wish to be fathers, but have yet to see that dream fulfilled. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would give peace to those whose fathers have joined the saints in the life everlasting and who are deeply missed today. We ask also that your peace would surround those who are fathers who have lost children. We ask that you would comfort them this day. O oh Lord, we lift up this morning each of our new members. We thank you for the unique spiritual gifts that each one of them brings to this community of faith. We pray that you would put their gifts to use in ways that build up the kingdom of Jesus Christ. May each of these new members trust that you have called them to this place. We pray that they would connect with others that they would connect with you. Now with a brief time of silent prayer, we lift up the concerns on our own hearts to your attentive ears. And now as one body, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples, praying together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the words of scripture are good to remind us that it is indeed better to give than it is to receive. So we invite you now to reflect on how we all might use ourselves and offer our resources to God.
Please join me now in our responsive prayer of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of resurrection, we praise you for being with us through the ups and downs of life. Thank you for your grace, which goes to the cross for us, endures the grave, and rises again. In gratitude to you for your love, we now offer you these gifts to be used for your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. today to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of God Almighty rest upon each of you today and throughout eternity. Amen. <laughs>